Hello tech enthusiasts and retro computing fans. Today we're diving into a fun and slightly nostalgic project. In this video, we're going to explore how to install Windows 98. Yes, you heard it right, Windows 98, from a USB drive in 2024. Hopefully you'll find us a useful guide for setting up your own Windows 98 machine. Before you start, you'll need a USB flash drive with at least 32 gigabytes. You also need Windows 98 install media and some drivers and utilities. I'll link all of those below. First, download and install Easy to Boot. This is a super useful tool. We can prepare a USB flash drive that can boot almost any CD or floppy image, even though we don't have an actual physical floppy or CD drive in our system. This is perfect for a thin client build like ours. Easy to boot likes to work with contiguous, not fragmented files. This is why we want a 32 gigabyte or larger USB drive. With smaller drives, we might run into weird install or boot issues. Once you've got Easy to Boot downloaded, run the install wizard and install anywhere you like. When the install completes, this Make E2V utility will launch. Just ignore and close this. Instead, open the install folder and find Make E2V USB Drive.cmd. Run this batch file as administrator. In the command window, select your target USB drive. You can see I'm using this ADATA drive with 32 gigabytes. Then hit Y to format the drive, and then zero to set the default partition options. You'll get one last warning. Hit OK to start the partition and format process. Once this is done, repeatedly hit Enter to accept all the default options. We don't need to do anything special here. When the process is done, the window will turn green. We can see it here. Just hit Enter and the window will close. Looking at the stick itself, we can see two partitions. First, we have this E2B partition 2. We can drag files here and they'll be made available to any host operating system we launch. Second, we have Easy to Boot itself. Most important for us is the ISO folder. Any ISOs or images you copy in here will be bootable via the Easy to Boot menu system. Now we'll start preparing our Easy to Boot drive for Windows 98 install. Mount the Windows 98 ISO and copy the Win98 folder over to our E2B partition 2. We'll install Windows 98 from hard drive instead of CD. This will make the install much faster and it's also super useful to have these files on a hard drive so we don't have to keep mounting the Windows 98 CD in future. Next, let's copy our drivers. We'll create a driver folder and put everything in there. Lastly, we want utilities. Same process again, we'll create a utils folder and put everything in there. Now we're done with the E2B partition 2, but we still need to sort our boot media. Switch to the easy to boot partition, navigate to the ISO folder and then the Win folder. Take the Windows 98 floppy image and copy it across. Once the copy is done, we need to change the file extension. Rename the file and change the extension to image fdhd01. This tells Easy to Boot that this is a floppy image and to mount the thin client internal drive as drive C, which is what we need for the Windows 98 install. That's our USB config done. Now let's switch over to the HP Thin client and start installing Windows 98. Okay, so I'm booting the Thin client and I have our easy to boot drive plugged in via the rear USB ports. Pretty quickly, the system will recognize the USB drive and start to load the easy to boot menu system. Let's just give that a moment to load. Okay, done. From the menu, select Windows Boot Menu. 
and then select Windows 98 Second Edition Boot. This will boot from our Windows 98 floppy image. Okay, we're in DOS. We have the Windows 98 floppy image mounted, and you can see the directory listing here. First, we need to prepare the thin client internal hard drive for Windows 98 install. So type fdisk, which is the Microsoft partition tool. Immediately you'll get this warning screen. It's pretty self-explanatory, but there's some historical interest here. Windows 98 was the first Microsoft OS with day one native support for FAT32 partitions, which allows us to have disk larger than two gigabytes. Windows 95 and earlier typically used FAT16 and won't be able to read these FAT32 partitions. Unless you plan to dual boot with Windows 3.11 or another older OS, hit Y to enable FAT32 support. This isn't a guide on how to use FDisk, there are plenty of others out there, but I will describe what I'm doing here. First, I'll hit 4 to see what partitions I have currently. Okay, it looks like I've got a FAT16 partition for DOS 6.22. We'll delete that, so let's hit 3 to delete partitions. And then 1 to delete the primary DOS partition. Okay, deleted. Now we'll hit 1 to create a new partition, and then 1 again to create a primary DOS partition. Do we want to use the maximum available size? Yes, please. Let's hit yes. Okay, done. Now we'll hit 2 to activate our new partition. Okay, it looks like it's already active. That's good news. We can also see the size. We have 4 gigabytes. Now we're all done with FDisk. Let's hit escape a few times to exit. Since we've made partition changes, we have to restart and boot from the Windows 98 floppy again. I'll do that now, this time I'll fast forward since we already know how to use easy to boot. Okay, great, back at the DOS prompt. This time we'll navigate to the D drive, which is our E to B partition 2, where our copied files sit. Let's list out the directory. Yep, we can see our copied folders here. We want to copy all these across to the thing client's internal hard disk, starting with the Win98 folder. Let's navigate there. Before we copy, we need to format the internal hard disk, so let's do that. Format C. Do you want to proceed? Yes. Okay, done. We'll call it Win98. Next, let's create a Win98 folder on our C drive, and then use the copy command to copy all the files across. This will take a while, so I'll fast forward. Okay, that's done. Let's repeat the process for the drivers and utils folders. Now with everything safely on our internal hard disk, we're ready to start the Windows 98 install process. Navigate to C, Win98 and run setup. Now again, there are a million guides out there on how to install Windows 98. I'm going to zoom through this and pick the default options. We'll pick up again when Windows boots for the first time. Okay, Windows 98. Now we need to install the drivers. But remember, they're zipped. So first, we need to install 7-zip. We have an old version here that works on Windows 98, 7Z 9.20. Again, I've linked it below. Double click to install. 
With 7-Zip installed, now let's go back to our drivers and extract them. Right click, 7-Zip, extract to drivers. With the drivers extracted, we're ready to install. The sequencing is super important here. If you do this out of order, it won't work. First, install the IDE hotfix. This is required to make the IDE controller play nice with Windows 98. It's a quick install and then hit yes to restart. When the machine launches, it will detect the IDE controllers Watch that run through and then hit yes to restart again. At the second attempt, Windows will restart to the desktop again. Now it's time to install the chipset drivers. Navigate to chipset and run setup.exe. Accept all the defaults and hit finish to restart. When Windows launches, some new hardware will be detected. Choose Search for the best driver, specify a location, and then type C Windows. This will become a common pattern as we install more drivers. With the hotfix and chipset drivers installed, the ordering from here is less important. My recommendation is to go with the GPU drivers first, the T5710, which we're using here, has a Radeon 7000M. This is the first generation Radeon and is surprisingly capable. You're much more likely to hit CPU versus GPU bottlenecks on this device, as it has a comparatively weak transmuter CPU. Perhaps I'll show that in a future video. With the GPU drivers installed, hit Finish to restart. Next up, Audio Drivers. Navigate to Audio and then run setup.exe. Follow all the default options to install the driver. The chipset on these HP Fin clients supports Sound Blast emulation, which you can enable in native DOS with a small utility. Check out my other videos to see that working. Again, hit Finish to restart. Next up is Network. Navigate to Network and run winsetup.exe. This is really useful for file transfer. Again, once the drivers are installed, hit Yes to restart. Lastly, we have the USB driver. Navigate back to the driver root and run U98SE USB.exe. Hit yes and then V to install the USB drivers for our VIA chipset. After the machine restarts, you'll be able to read and write USB sticks. Here I'm inserting an 8GB Kingston USB stick. You can see it's quickly recognized and I can see all the files on here. Checking the space, I can see the full 8 gigabytes recognized correctly. Now we're done with drivers, let's take a look at utilities and test our new system a little bit. Navigate up and find C Utils. First, let's install DirectX 7.0a. There are newer versions available for Windows 98, I think up to 9.0c. But really, 7 is the most stable and sufficient for almost any game you're likely to play here. Recommend that you go with this version. Again, another restart is required. Press OK to restart. When the machine loads again, extract and run WinSCP. This is an FTP client and very, very useful for copying files.
I'm going to create a games folder and then copy across the Quick 2 demo. You can see it's super quick. With the installer copied across, let's extract and install Quick 2. Follow the wizard and accept all the default settings. Okay, that's it for the Windows 98 setup guide. I really do think these HP Thin clients are great for Windows 98 gaming. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative and engaging. If you did, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more tech-related content.